The two long weeks on the road associated with the launch of a new international office in London, combined with excessive travel have left me drained, but the worst part was being away from my girls, and the 16-hour journey back home was a real nightmare, even in first class. I hate being away from my girls and my wife, but, the lifestyle I've created for my family makes work challenging due to the high demand. My energy company has grown and expanded to 12 countries. Five years ago, I bought out Roger, my partner. These past five years have been tough, but at the same time, productive. Finally, I'm ready to relax and enjoy the success, since I've hired a new president to run the operation. While I remain the CEO and owner, I plan to share the good news with the girls. As soon as I get home, I'm excited because I'll have more time with my family and friends, and I can get back to normal. Don't get me wrong, I love how my company has grown, but deep down, my goal has always been to spend most of my time watching my girls grow and spending more time with my wife. I'm happy that I finally had the chance to step back and enjoy the fruits of my labor at 45. My life may have been stressful, but it has always been filled with love and warmth. I wouldn't change a thing. And now, I'm looking forward to the next chapter of my life with my family. Just 30 minutes from home, that, as might have, the driver navigated through traffic jams I sat in the back seat of the limousine, relaxing and enjoying a second glass of bourbon that I poured from the side mini bar after leaving the airport. As we pulled into the circular driveway, the house appeared quiet, but I knew from experience that in a few minutes, my girls would jump all over their dad and their mom would greet me with a warm kiss and the promise of a wonderful night in her arms with dread. I entered an empty house, the only sound was the driver placing my bags in the foyer. I called out, but there was no response. It was strange, the girls were always home. When I returned from a trip, I hoped everything was okay. Then, I saw an envelope with my name written in her beautiful handwriting for Jonathan, from your beloved wife, my dearest. Jonathan. What? An incredible journey we've had as husband and wife. I've treasured every minute of the past 16 years and eagerly look forward to the next 50 I'll spend by your side. As your beloved wife, darling, you know how much I love you, and you are my entire world. You are my life, and I can't live without you. The love you give me is all I desire, and I long to be in your arms every day. I've missed you so much these past two weeks, and I can't wait to see you later tonight. There are several reasons for this letter. My dear, first, I want to thank you for being you, for giving me these wonderful 16 years of my life, and for being an amazing father to our children, for the wonderful lifestyle you've allowed us to experience, and most importantly, for all the love you constantly pour upon me. The other reason is something I feel. I must share something that has been weighing on me for the past six months. It's something I never expected, and unfortunately, has become a significant part of my life. Everything you've just read is true, and I utter every word from the depths of my heart. What I'm about to tell you is the most difficult thing I've ever done no matter how much I love you, and I will never stop loving you. I have to confess something. I pray that you understand and that you won't be disappointed in me, or leave me for this. I've been in a relationship for the last six months. I don't feel any feelings or love for this man, but we have an intimate relationship. The reason I'm telling you now is out of respect and a deep sense of guilt. I can't live with this guilt any longer, and I need you to know that I've been unfaithful. You will never understand it, but I don't feel love for him, just an attraction. I can't explain. He does things to me that I can't put into words, and no matter how hard I try, I can't stop myself. He's become my addiction, and I need him in my life. Please believe that I've done everything I can to keep this a secret, and not let it affect our lives. Nothing has changed between us since it started, but I understand that it can end soon. So, it's only fair that you find out everything without secrets. My love, I love and respect you too much to do this. Please understand that my need for him is purely physical and I won't let being with him interfere with our love or intimacy. I just needed you to know that there's another part of me that I gave to someone else man. But, this part of me has nothing to do with my love. For you, and the importance of our family is the most important part of my life, and my number one value. Nothing will change that our girls are staying over at your mom's place, so don't worry about them, and they can't wait to see their dad in the morning. I'm with my friend tonight because I wanted to give you some alone time to read my letter and figure out how things will go from here. I'll be home around 10pm, and we can continue where we left off as if nothing has changed because nothing has changed. Dear, just remember when you read this, that you are, the love of my life, and I'm yours until death. Do us part, I'm yours darling, and I'll give you everything you desire or need. You for being you and the best husband, a girl can dream of with love, always, and forever. Your devoted wife, Soya. After finishing the letter, 
I realized that the bourbon glass I was drinking from was now embedded in the wall. I didn't even remember throwing the glass, let alone throwing it with such force that some shards remain in the wall. The ability to make quick decisions is what led to my success in business. And now, I was acting out of habit. I grabbed a piece of paper and wrote a response, letter, sealed the envelope with her name, clearly written on it, and placed it on the table next to the one addressed to me. I put her letter in my pocket, packed some luggage, and went up to the girl's room to pack clothes for a few days. As we had a short trip ahead in the car I called my supervisor and told him to arrange a corporate plane for a trip to San Francisco, where I would be with my daughters in the near future. At 6.30 that evening, I was in my car heading to my parents' house to pick up the girls. I have a corporate apartment next to my office in California, where I had already stored a full set of clothes, and everything needed for an extended stay. When I arrived at my parents' house, the girls came running to greet me with big smiles on their faces and 100 kisses. Happy to see me, and I felt like I was smiling ING for the first time since I got home. Daddy's back. We missed you, Daddy. And we didn't expect to see you until tomorrow. Mom said, you wouldn't be back until tomorrow. She was supposed to meet her friend, Jamie tonight. And we came here to see Grandma and Grandpa. The girls said, I hugged and kissed them. And tears streamed down my face from all that love and the realization that their lives were about to change because of their mother. The name Jamie did, didn't go unnoticed, and for a while, I stored it in my memory bank. After the girls calmed down, I told them, I had a surprise and we were going on a trip for a few days. Flying on the company plane, I promised them a fun and exciting vacation. Convincing the girls was the easiest part. Explaining something to mom and dad is a completely different story. They clearly sensed my pain and opposed my taking the girls until I let them read the letter. I explained that I needed some time to get to a safe place to think and plan everything. Without letting emotions get in the way, I left a letter for Zoe and told them I would call her from the plane. I promised that I would be back in two weeks. And it was just a short trip and not to worry about the girls. As they would be, well, taken care of. When we boarded the plane, the girls were running up and down the aisle of the 16th seat plane and playing with the flight attendant whom the girls adored. Jessica was one of our regular attendants, and over the past two years, we have become good friends. Spending hours alone on flights can create friendships with the right people. It was 11 at night and the girls had fallen asleep. The cabin lights were dimmed and the atmosphere was calm and relaxing. That's why I dialed the home number to speak with Zoe. Jonathan, where are you? Honey, Suea listen attentively. Don't interrupt, as I might lose signal at this altitude. I know you've read my letter. And, you know the girls are with me. They'll call you in the morning. I'll call you in the next few days to discuss everything. Call mom and dad. You need anything. Meanwhile, good night. I hung up before I could respond. The flight went smoothly, and we landed at 1 in the morning. I took the girls to a waiting limousine, and some time later, I arrived at my house. I talked with them and kissed them, and 10 minutes later, I fell asleep without even unpacking the bags. We would have time for that tomorrow. Jennifer, 13, and 15 looked at me with curiosity after the call, almost as if the older one had a sad look. Mom, betrayed you dad. My heart broke. Hearing her statement, holding back tears, I simply shook my head and told them to get dressed for dinner. It was the hardest thing I had ever had to do. But I knew with love and support, they could navigate the challenges ahead that very morning. Before the girls woke up, I called my family lawyer, who was on the East Coast, and already sitting at his desk. I've known George for 20 years, and we've been through a lot together. So, I told him the story and what I wanted to happen without beating around the bush. George, I need to know what a divorce will look like and how bad it will be. I want to get custody of the kids. No matter the cost, there's no reconciliation therapy or forgiveness. I want this to end as soon as possible. I said, there was silence on the other end of the line for a long moment. I understood and gave him the chance to digest the news. He was probably as surprised by my words as I was. When I read Zoe's letter, Jonathan, I'm really sorry that this has happened. Kate and I always thought you two were the perfect couple, and I can't understand how she could do this. But I understand what you're asking for. Do you remember when you and Roger founded a company, and he insisted on a prenuptial agreement before agreeing to start a business with you? Do you remember how firm he was about what happened to his last business and how his wife cheated on him? Well, your prenuptial agreement is drafted and up to date, and if you've truly had an affair, you waive your rights to the children and any financial benefits from the marriage for many years. As your company grew, I set up a prenuptial relationship, worked with your corporate lawyers and transferred most of your assets to a trust, of which you were the beneficiary, a house, cars, bank accounts, and investments. Everything is under this untouchable trust. This means that if you violated the marriage contract, 
you leave the marriage with what you brought in, and lose any rights to the children. I know we didn't put all this in place for this purpose, but it seems like everything will work in your favor. George, you're right, never in a million years. Would I have thought she'd betray me, and I completely forgot about the prenuptial agreement. But George, all I have is a letter, confessing her infidelity. What more do we need? I asked. Well, a confession on video or recording from her, would help along with some photos or a confession from her lover. George, can you take care of this while I'm here in California with the girls? Money doesn't matter, and I want to gather evidence as soon as possible. I don't want this to drag on. There's a name, girls, a guy named Jamie, the only Jamie. I know is the tennis instructor at our country club. You can hire a private investigator and suggest starting there. I'm sure he'll get in touch with his lover while I'm away. Of course, Jamie, the tennis instructor was my sworn enemy. They were careless, which made it easy for the private company to conduct the investigation. With my permission, they installed a tracker on Sue's car. Audio recording devices inside the car and video cameras in our house. All the evidence obtained through these devices was legitimate because my company controlled them through a trust. Over the next week, they gathered enough audio and video recordings, as well as a written confession to proceed with the case. I never saw or heard any of the evidence as I didn't want those images to haunt me for the rest of my life. Of course, it turned out that Jaime was a womanizer and had to leave his last two jobs because he slept with other married women. He was much younger, in great shape, and all the ladies at the club were enamored with him. Zoe was just one of the many wives he had an affair with at the club. Clearly, middle-aged, married women were an easy target for this club. George called me five days after our initial conversation to update me on the progress of the investigation. Jonathan, we have all the necessary evidence. What do you want us to do? Are you still planning to divorce Zoe? Without hesitation, I replied, draft the divorce documents carefully. I want Zoe to feel some of the pain she caused me and realize how much she messed up. We can sort things out and I'll work from the perspective of professional tennis. I'll be in touch with you. I plan to be at home and wait for her after she's served. On Tuesday, George asked, Are you sure you're going to divorce her, Jonathan? As we're speaking now, definitely. However, I have to think about the girls and talk to her before signing the papers. It's tough, George, and I hope you never have to go through something like this. I love this woman with all my heart. And I just can't stop loving her. I also hate what she did to us, me and the girls. And I'll never be able to forgive that. Whatever your decision, I'm here to assist Jonathan, stay in touch, and we'll notify you as soon as she's served. We arrived home on Tuesday morning around 9 o'clock a.m., and the girls were happy to be back home. After their mom returned from tennis practice, I'd like them to stay in their rooms while their mom and I sorted things out. I could see they were upset and worried. And, I did my best to reassure them that everything would be okay. Six months later, the divorce was finalized as Zoe remained the mother of my two girls. I paid for the first three months of a small, furnished, two-bedroom apartment that was close to our house and the club. I also bought her a three-year-old Toyota SAA for her to drive. I knew I didn't have to give her anything, but I needed my kids to be able to see their mom whenever they wanted. Yes. The Lamborghini and the luxurious lifestyle were already a thing of the past. She gave it all up for some tennis player. Losers, she would never see again being a decent guy, like me. I even got her a job at a country club. Yes, the country club was more than willing to help. As soon as I withdrew my lawsuit, they agreed to part ways with Jamie and assist Zoe with employment. If she dropped the lawsuit, Zoe was no longer a member of the country club but she was now one of the club's waitresses, helping her make ends meet, since she had no experience or training for any other job. Her only option was to get a job as a waitress at a club. I'm sure she felt humiliated when she went from being one of the famous club members to one of their waitresses. That, of course, Jamie abandoned her. As soon as the lawsuit began, in an attempt to keep his job, so, now she had no one to turn to at home. The girls told me, their mom cried every night, for the love and lifestyle, she had sacrificed for some selfish needs. It took all this for her to realize what she had done and how foolish she had been to think. Her husband would accept her selfish desires, it's sad. Sodden me, how things turned out. And I told the girls that I still love their mom and that they should love and forgive her. They remained close and saw mom on weekends later that year. When she was picking up the girls, we had our first friendly conversation. She told me she had finally realized what she had done and begged me to forgive her for her actions. 
Jonathan, I know we'll never be together again, and you'll never trust me again. But, I wanted to apologize and beg you to forgive me. Now, I understand what I did, and how much I hurt you. My life was completely different, and I was a spoiled woman who didn't care about anyone else. I felt entitled. And justify my actions, without even thinking about how you would react. Now, I know what I've done, and what I put you through, and I'm so sorry. If there was a way to get it all back, I would, in a heartbeat, lose you was the worst thing that ever happened to me. And I miss you. And love you so much. It hurts. I've matured over the past year, and when I look back, I can't believe how foolish I was to give it all up for my selfish and entitled attitude. I'm so remorseful for ruining everything. And I beg you to find the strength to forgive me. Her confession was sincere. And I knew that with time, maybe I could forgive her. I would never stop loving her. She was my life, and I had loved her for so many years. Such love cannot be extinguished overnight. I hoped she had learned her lesson and would remain faithful when that happened. They let Jamie from the club, and he eventually moved to South Carolina, where a small club in Hilton had arranged for him to be an assistant to a professional tennis player. It only took him a month before he returned to his old ways and started pursuing married women. Again. However, the men in South Carolina are a bit less forgiving than in the big city when they caught him with one of the good guy's wives. It didn't end. Well. About a month later. A local newspaper reported a crocodile attack on a golf course over the weekend. And the photo showed a 5-meter crocodile's hand. Poor Jamie must have gone for a run by the lake and was accidentally caught by one of these crocodiles. Finally, Jamie stopped being a predator and became prey during one of my lonely nights, reflecting on our happy family moments. I read a passage that made me think a man's biggest mistake is giving another man the opportunity to make his wife smile. I will never make that mistake.